Hi, I'm scruffy looking RGB. In this video, I'll be showing off this Japan exclusive 6 button Mega Drive controller for the Nintendo Switch Online. We will be comparing it to the original 6 button controller to contrast the differences and similarity. I'll disassemble both controllers and we'll look at what the differences are under the hood as well. So if you just want a glimpse at the new controller and don't want to geek out on the innards with me, I'll put chapters in this video so you can skip to the part that interests you. But for the scruffy looking tinkering and curious nerf herders out there, I'll be taking a closer look at all the parts of the controller. I have a couple of big expectations for this controller. The first being I hope the buttons and the d-pad are the same as the original so that I can make a mold and use the new buttons for the cleanest possible casting. And secondly, I'm hoping to be able to use an 8-bit dough dongle so I can use this controller on the original hardware. But today, we'll be solely focusing on the similarities and differences in mechanics of the controller itself and its parts. I'll be reviewing its performance and attempting to use it with an 8-bit dough dongle in a future video. So without further ado, let's get scruffy looking. Here she is, fresh and clean, right out of the factory. From first glance, it has a really sweet finish. It looks a lot like the original, except without the cord. You've got the home button and the screenshot button. It looks really good. And your synchronized button to sync up with your Switch. The back here is a little different. It's got Nintendo's logo on it, but it looks really pristine. Here is the original old school six button controller for the Mega Drive here. As you can see, it's a bit scruffy. It is uh, 30 something years old, probably. Um, it's lost some of its glossiness on the glossy parts. But I've seen worse controllers here and there. So let's uh, put them close together so we can get a good view. The uh, Sega logo is a little uh, subdued on the older one. Um, and the finish on these two different controllers. The newer one has a finer finish. It's a very matte colored, but finer than the original. The original kind of is a little bit more glossy. I don't know if you could pick that up from the uh, video here. But everything seems to be in place like it is on the original. Um, just brand new. Let's take a listen to the buttons. They're very snappy, very clicky. Feels pretty good. And the uh, D-pad feels really smooth, like much smoother than the original one, in my opinion. The mode button feels about the same, maybe a little bit clickier. Buttons feel very responsive though, which is a good thing. And let's take a look at the older one. The older one definitely has some more rattling noise. It's been around a while. Buttons are not as clicky, but they're still responsive. I find that the D-pad on the older pad is, uh, it feels more clicky. The one on the newer pad is very smooth, but they're very close. Um, if you like clicky buttons, you're going to like the new pad, definitely. If you prefer less clicky buttons, you'll probably prefer the original. You can hear the difference in the buttons here. Very crisp and uh, more subdued on the original. Some ASMR for you, button clicks. So the buttons on the new controller feel really snappy, like we've uh, discovered. But let's go ahead and take apart the original controller and see what it has underneath its hood. The original controller uses a Phillips head, whereas the new controller uses a tri-wing screwdriver. So here we have the original board, similar to the Famicom controllers or other controllers time. It's got the pads in there and the start button pad this long blue cylinder type button and the six buttons here as well three black a b and c and the gray x y and z and we've got pretty much everything apart on this one the d-pad of the original you have to use a phillips or a flathead screwdriver to kind of pry the little plastic piece off the back of the d-pad 
it comes off like so. A little two-piece plastic D-pad. Okay, so let's take out our tri-wing screwdriver and get to the brand new controller. got all kinds of new microchip and circuits and batteries in here. That's a lot different than the original for sure. What kind of battery is this? It's like we have a rechargeable lithium ion battery that has 3.7 volt and at 220 milliamp, 0.8 watt hour. There are also a lot of little tiny Phillips screws. So we got to put our Phillips back in in order to remove the main board. Let's do that real quick. So the main board comes out easy enough and here it is up close on the front side. Round contact points instead of the old linear ones. Here's a comparison of the mode buttons, the newer on the left, and we can see the D-pad is definitely different. It's got a screw, it doesn't just snap in. Here's the old button on the right and the new button on the left. You can see the keying is a little bit different so let's uh, see if we can stick these old ones in the new controller and vice versa so yeah you see it doesn't uh, fully reset into the controller but i'm wondering uh anybody out there more experienced than me would you attempt uh, making mold with this um, we might just have to shave off the registers the extra register there and it should be able to fit in there but let me know down in the comments if you're a molder out there rocker gaming Rourke. You guys let me know if it's worth it. But these are the two A buttons next to each other, if you're curious. And here we've got the uh, two start buttons. You can see here that the newer one on the left is quite a bit shorter than the old start button on the right. So we probably wouldn't be able to make a mold of these and uh, interchange them. But I could be wrong. Other buttons, we've got the X, Y, Z. Just kind of making a quick comparison here. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the D-pad on the new one. We'll just take this golden Phillips screw out. It is um, very close to the original, but as you can see, the keying on it is different. And instead of snapping in, there's a screw. I'm guessing this one will also not be able to be molded and interchanged. There they are side to side, very similar feel very much similar plastic too. I think Nintendo did a really good job here. The pros to this controller are that it's very sturdy, well made, and it looks exactly like the original. The cons of this is that its availability is very subpar. In my opinion, Nintendo should make this available to the masses all over the world, not just limited to Japan. Another thing that I'm not familiar with is the size of this controller. It feels and is quite a bit smaller than the original Sega 3-button controller. Maybe some people might be bothered by that, but I think the 6-button configuration makes it all worthwhile. Did this controller meet my hopes? The quick answer is no and possibly. I know that's confusing, but I had hoped to use these buttons for molding and interchanging with the original, and with today's comparison, that doesn't seem like it's possible. But pro modders out there, let me know what you think. Is it worth the fuss? In my opinion, it's not. And my second hope for this controller is still a question mark. Will this controller be able to be used with the original hardware with an 8-bit dough dongle? Inquiring minds want to know. As for the controller itself, I'll be giving it a lot of testing since I recently purchased a Nintendo Switch and the controversial Nintendo Online Mega Drive Pack. So if you'd like to see more on this controller, I may do a live stream or two of testing. If you'd like to see that, let me know down in the comments. But aesthetically, the controller is a real beauty. And if you plan on playing a lot of Mega Drive on the Switch, it may be worth it. Granted, you can pick one up for a decent price. And who knows, maybe in the near future, someone will get this bad boy working on the original hardware. And won't that be awesome? I have to thank Brother Show for bringing my attention to this one, because I don't usually follow recent developments with Nintendo, but I guess I should start now. So thank you, Show, for the alert. By the way, if you didn't know, Show has a heck of a YouTube channel himself. He breaks down and shows you all kinds of goodies and how to get the best out of your retro game hardware and software. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Show. I'll leave a link to his channel down below 
so be sure to check him out. Question of the day, will you be purchasing this controller? What are your thoughts on this one? Did you like this teardown and comparison video? Would you like to see more? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you all for hanging out with me on this teardown. If you want to see more modding videos or game hunting videos, click the card of your choice on the end screen. Take care out there, but above all, stay scruffy looking. Who's scruffy looking?